Alright, so check this out guys. I'm going to show you how to make an amazing Chrome extension that is going to instantly beautify your entire web experience. Wow, isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, I know. And it even it doesn't even take that long to make. I'll show you how to do it really, really easily. Alright, so I'm going to jump into IntelliJ IDEA and create a new project. Uh, we're going to select static web and not any of these extra things unless you want to. And I'm going to change the project location. You save it wherever you want obviously. I'm going to actually change to call it Zaboomafu. There we go. Alright, so if you don't know what a Chrome extension is, it's really easy to make. And what at its core, a Chrome extension is just a manifest.json file. And that's all that is necessary, plus a couple of JavaScript files to give it some functionality. Now, I'm going to start out by going and making that manifest.json file. So I'm going to add a new manifest.json alright now this is kinda of boilerplate stuff that you kinda of have to memorize or look up but we're gonna go ahead and put in manifest version and this is json format so you're gonna put a colon and oops one you're also gonna to wanna to give your Chrome extension a name and I choose Zaboomafu Good. Now version, just, I don't know, put anything here. This just has to change every time you submit it to the Chrome store, the Chrome web store. Otherwise, it'll throw you an error, but that's not that hard to do. Description, let's see here. Now you really want to market yourself here and go ahead and make it sound appealing. With... A hilarious Sabumafu. Okay, good. Now, this next part here, I'll get into later, but what Content Scripts does is this is really the backbone of how you're going to structure your Chrome extension. You're going to make it an array, and in that array, we're going to put another object with an element called matches. Matches is a necessary element of the subarray, and in it you're going to want to put all URLs that you're going to want to attack. So in it you can actually put youtube.com if you're wanting to target one thing, but for this purpose you can look up the code. All URLs is what we're going to want to be looking for. And one more thing, JS, this is where we include our main file and we'll go ahead and create that in a bit zaboomafu.js and one more thing where we're gonna get that picture of a zaboomafu we're actually gonna put it in local storage uh, you can put a reference towards it to a URL but that URL link can change so I'm gonna go ahead and put web accessible resources and make a resolution or a resource folder afterwards so this is going to be under local storage and that's just going to be able to make it load faster okay so like I said we're going to go ahead and create the functionality of JS. My MacBook fan is really hot right now because I'm recording. And it is a very expensive MacBook. Hang on. Okay, Zaboomafu. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to put. In JavaScript, always put using strict, even in production because you're going to want to throw lots of errors at you fail fast function okay now here first I'll get into the basics 
Um, I'm going to want to select all of the images and put that into a variable. So in JavaScript, you can do that by saying images list equals, you're going to get the document element, elements by tag name. All right, so for our beautiful Chrome extension, you're going to want to get every single image on the page. Now, this isn't going to include videos, but it will hit their thumbnails. So this tutorial is only going to show you how to replace the image tags. Now, we're going to want to look to see if images list is not null. And if it isn't, then we're going to get images list dot for each. For each takes in a function that will tell you uh, what to do with each of these elements in the images list. So pass in element, which is going to be what we're iterating through. And for each of these, element dot source. Now, here's, it, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You're going to want to put this crazy function call in here that calls from local storage. It's going to be chrome.extension.getURL. And once again, I'm going to make this folder in a little bit. Zabumafu.jpg. Now, the reason why we can't just say element.source, we can't just say something like dot slash res zabumafu. That's not the proper way to get it in a Chrome extension, because what that's going to do is it's going to take your current URL in the web page and try to load this tacked on to the end of the URL. And that's not really what we want, because we put zabumafu into our local storage. And one more thing. Some of you who are acute out there know that this is actually not correct. Images list is an HTML array, and we just call it the JavaScript for each, and it's going to spit out an error because you can't iterate through it as it's an HTML array and not a JavaScript array. So what we're going to want to do is convert it array dot from array is from the it's a prototype array dot from basically it takes anything that's iterable and iterable with a length and it goes through each one of them so that's exactly the behavior that we want okay that looks good var target what I'm gonna do here is show you how to make it persistent all right, so let's say you're scrolling on YouTube, and actually, let's go ahead and test this out real quick. So here's how you test it out. So here's how you're going to test out your Chrome extension. You're going to want to go into settings. You have to have developer mode enabled, by the way. Uh, extensions. And load an unpacked extension. So I'm going to go to code. Chrome extensions. Oh my gosh. Zabumafu. Select. Manifest. Hey everyone, I made a boo-boo, by the way. In your manifest version, it's got to be set to 2 because something about how it's deprecated in Chrome 18. That's easily fixable. My bad. I'm sorry, guys. Alright, well, before I load this up, I'm going to want to include that file new directory res now we're gonna drop the I don't want that there I want it right here yeah okay there we go now we're gonna drop Zabumafu in here so 
and take my downloads. Drop this guy here. Looking good. Alright, so we need to rename this to zabumafu.jpg so we can find it. So, where are you? Refactor under rename zabumafu. Awesome. Kill that. Now, let's head back to our extensions. So, you need to have developer mode enabled. Now let's load the unpack extension, the Bumafu. Select. Hopefully this is going to work. It does, and it's down here. That's kind of misleading actually. Let's go ahead and refresh that. Alright, so let's see what's been going on. Yahoo.com. Nice. But hang on, wait a minute. Where, where's the Boomafu? It's gone. Let's try YouTube. Look up an awesome movie. What's going on here? Alright, so there's a little bit more to this if you're still invested into here. What you're going to want to do is add a mutation observer and constantly be rechecking. See, back in that yahoo.com example, what happened was we added image elements after the DOM, the DOM was being altered with new image elements as we started to load more. It was a lazy load, and I don't blame Yahoo for using that because it's much more efficient to load as it's being requested, as you can probably guess. Now, we're going to go ahead and account for that by adding in a new trick up our sleeves. Document.query selector, it's just going to return whatever we specify in body, which is body. And we're going to declare a new observer, new mutation observer. That's going to take a function as a parameter with the mutation. For each of these mutations, we're going to have this, another function, focusing on the individual mutation. And what we're going to want to do is refresh. I'm going to create this in a second. Refresh list is a function. OK. Now we're going to want to put this into a refresh function. Refresh list. Now this is repeatable, which is pretty nice. For each of this mutation observer is going to find, oh hey, we've got a mutation. And for each of them, we're going to refresh our list right here and make sure all of our images are nice and clean as a boom of foods. But we're not done yet. We gotta define one more thing. And this is just a boring boilerplate kind of thing that you can look up if you want. You could look at the documentation, but I forgot it already. Server.observe. Now we're going to put pass in target and our config variable. So body is going to observe our observer. Let's test it out. Reload. Don't forget to do that. Alright, what's going on? It's 
there an error? Oh, my bad, Jet. Why didn't you guys say anything? Gosh. Let's try that now. Ah, gorgeous. But wait a minute, that still didn't solve our problem. What's going on? 